In this video, I want to talk to you about explainable AI. And explainability is a fascinating and important topic that sits at the intersection of several areas of research. And in this video, we're going to evaluate Lime as a technique to explain the predictions generated in our, in our tutorial by an NLP model. Of course, Lime works with multiple uh, classifiers for different types of tasks. But for this specific uh, video, we're going to, going to cover an NLP task. And the specific use case is text classification using TF-IDF vectorizer and logistic regression. And we already have uh, done this project in a previous video. So therefore, let me just open the file so we can actually see what we've done before. So definitely go ahead, check that video out because I'm not going to run all of these cells again and I'm not going to go through the explanations, but definitely check out that video and uh, see exactly how we arrived at the conclusion that TF-IDEA vectorizer is superior to count vectorizer when it comes to, to these types of NLP tasks. Because as you can see here, we have uh, reached the result that TF-IDF has better linearly separable classes as shown in the increased F1 score. So go ahead, check that video out and go through all of these uh, cells and see exactly what we're doing here. Now that we have our model trained, we can see that we trained the logistic regression with, with the data. Let's actually go ahead and see what Lime actually does and how it can help us explain a certain prediction. First of all, we have to understand what Lime means and what, what it, where it comes from. Now, Lime is local fidelity, interpretive, model agnostic, and explanation. These are uh, uh, the four components of our Lime um, model. Let's actually go to the GitHub of this project. So we can see that this project is about explaining what machine learning classifiers or models are doing. And at the moment, they support individual predictions for text classifiers or classifiers that act on tables. So it can be numeric and categorical data or images. So it's, it's a little bit restrictive, but for NLP tasks, Lime performs wonderfully. And I definitely encourage you to use Lime whenever you have an NLP task. And you, you can also go for uh, the paper and you can read about, about it in more, in more details. But if we actually check out the project, we can uh, see how it actually predicts in a more practical way rather than just reading the paper. So let's go ahead and we can see how we can explain the predictions that we got from our NLP model with uh, TFID vectorizer and the logistic regression. But before we start, I just wanna thank you for liking this video and for subscribing to our channel because we really wanna help you guys grow in the data science space. And we hope that our videos help you achieve any of your goals related to, to this industry. So let's go ahead. The first thing that you need to do is install Lime. And you can get that uh, by installing uh, with pipenv, in my case, or you can also install with pip install Lime, okay? I already have it, but definitely you have to install Lime so that you can use it, which it makes sense, of course. The very next thing that we need to do in this scenario, we're going to create a pipeline, okay? So that we can just see how we can, uh, what results we get from, uh, from a specific prediction. So we're going to create a pipeline with our TFID vectorizer and the model. Okay, the TFID vectorizer you can find. Uh, let's see. So this is the the method. As you can see, we use the TFID vectorizer from Scikit-Learn, and then we fit it and transform the data, and then we returned it as well, so we can use it. Okay, and the model. The model is a logistic regression with balanced class weights. So we have these two. So now we can 
run this and we created a pipeline and let's take one uh, uh, one record from our test uh, set and this is a string just happened a terrible cra car crash then we want to see the probability of this being a disaster or not so let's just see what prediction we get the probability of this text being disaster is 0 0.66 so our model actually performs very well it predicts that this tweet is about a disaster with a probability of 66 percent now that we have this we need to understand why okay why does our classifier consider that this specific text uh, is more probable to be a disaster and this is exactly what lime does we have to import the lime text explainer there are multiple explainers, but for this specific task, we're going to use the Lime text explainer and we're going to use the class names irrelevant or disaster because these, these are our class names. Of course, I don't have to um, necessarily add these because it's zero and one, but it, it makes nicer for uh, when we're going to print the results. And now, and we want to specify what's the maximum number of features that we want to be explained by the model. Now, this is quite interesting. You might be wondering why do we need to, why don't we just explain all the features? It, it would make sense, right? I mean, in, in this example, I'm going to actually explain all the features because I'm going to get the maximum number of features. Let's go ahead and see what's the maximum number of features. So the maximum number of words in a tweet is 31. So now that we have this maximum number of features, again, we're coming back to the idea of why do we need to submit it? Because we can just explain all of them. But the, the, the thing is, when it comes to performance, if we try to evaluate the performance, we're going to see that the prediction results provided by Lime will be affected by the chosen classifier. But the good aspect is that the variances in the significant features aren't as affected as the insignificant ones. So therefore, the most important features will be the ones that maintain their importance regardless of uh, the classifier that we use. In that sense, we don't necessarily need to explain all of the features. We just need to explain the top, let's say, five features or the top three or so on and so forth because the reality is that Lime maintains the explanatory ability of the significant features regardless of the chosen classifier. So here, for example, we don't necessarily need to submit max features as the actual maximum amount of features. We can just choose to explain the top five features and then we can set the max features to, uh, to three. But just for the sake of this example, I'm just going to explain all of the features. I'm going to choose just a random record and I'm going to set the C to 13 so that you get the same results and the index of that record is just going to be a random integer between 0 and the length of our test set. So now we're going to use our explainer, our Lime text explainer and then we're going to explain the instance of that specific record and we're going to pass in the predict probability method from the, our pipeline and of course we're going to pass in the number of features which will be 31 in our scenario let's run this and now let's print again i'm going to print the probability of the sample uh, to be a disaster and this will be 66 percent and now let's see the explanation as a list of the weighed features let's uh, run this and we can see which are the most important features here. We got train, derailed, car. Okay, these are the top three most important features that help us understand that the tweet that we're talking about is a disaster. And you can see that also has a negative weight, meaning that also actually decreases the probability of this being a disaster. So this is exactly what we get. We get a list of tuples with uh, the tuple being formed out of uh, the actual word feature and its weight. Let's see exactly how 
our Lime, how our Lime model works. Now that we've seen the results, we can see that first we have to choose a prediction that we want to explain. So here, as you can see, this is the record that we decided that we want to choose to be explained. Now, Lime creates permutations of this instance and collects the model predictions. And then what it does, it assigns weights to the new created samples based on how closely they match the data to the original prediction. And now it trains a less complex interpreter model, which is the linear regression by default. And it trains this model on the data variations that are created using the weights attached to each variation. So the prediction can be therefore explained by this linear regression model, and it becomes a more simpler model to, to explain. And that's exactly what we got here, right? We got each word and each feature, and then its specific weight that explains its importance for that prediction. Now, if we would have uh, chosen here, let's say just five features, as I explained earlier, let's run this again. You see, these are the top most important features and it just gets the top five in our example. But again, as I mentioned earlier, I'd rather send, I'd rather ask for the weights for all of the features because anyway, then I can manipulate that afterwards and just get the first five because anyway, it's ordered uh, descending in importance of the feature towards that specific class. But yeah, I mean, you can, you can choose either just the top most important or all of them. Because as I, uh, as I was saying, Lime maintains the explanatory ability of the significant features regardless of the chosen classifier. Now that we've got these results, we can also uh, plot them. And this is a nice plot to get the local explanation. And we can see that train, derail, and car act towards the sample to be considered a disaster while also acting the opposite way of uh, the tweet being irrelevant. And if this isn't pretty enough, you can actually use another way to show it in a notebook. And if we run this, we can see that our prediction probabilities, irrelevant and disaster, basically the class names that we provided here are shown in a pretty manner. And we can see that the probability for these five terms add up to the um, sample to be considered a, a disaster with a probability of 0.77, while irrelevant is just 0.23. And we have this nice representation on both sides. And we can also see the highlighted text where these words are considered to be either towards skewed towards the disaster aspect or towards the irrelevant aspect. I really hope that this video helped you guys and I'll see you in the next video.